Who am I? Where do I belong? When I'm looking in the mirror, do I even know who is looking back? What am I doing here? and venture into the unknown? Who am I kidding? I'm Gabe Reed, and this is my show. <clears throat> this is the Gabe Reed Show. We're coming to your Wednesday night. We'll make all your dreams come to life. Impossible comes through. It's taking over you. This is the Gay Reach Show. We talk about things you like. We all got to swallow our pride. Coronavirus. This is the Gay Reach Show. Welcome to the Gabe Reed Show. I am your host, Gabe Reed, and welcome to this poorly attended show. I have learned so much in our time. I don't know what week number this is, but there are some major life lessons that I have learned in this time, and I trust you have done some self-reflecting and learned some valuable lessons as well. But tonight, I want to share some of those lessons that I have learned and share those with you this evening. Number one, showers. They have become optional. <laughs> Brushing your teeth, also optional. It's amazing. Nobody can smell you. No one knows if you have bad breath. It's great. Also, we're on Zoom meetings all the time. People only see from here up. Pants, also optional. It's great. I wear my cozy pants all day long. Number four. How many of you guys have screen tracking on your phones? Yep, that got deleted after day two. Get rid of that. Indiana weather, it's like you're asking somebody you're dating, hey, where do you want to go for dinner? Just make up your stinking mind. <laughs> Social media, still a terrible place to spend your time. Bring back the cat memes, please. Seven, calendars, far overrated. Seriously, no one even knows or cares what day it is anymore. Get rid of them. Meetings, this is where you can learn to appreciate Zoom. Meetings should only last 40 minutes tops, and 99% of them should have been an email. That goes to the adults in this room. E-learning, are you guys finally starting to appreciate your teachers? Students, you are blessed with some phenomenal, phenomenal educators who love you and want to see you thriving. So in this time, I hope you're learning to appreciate them. Show them some love. My last one, walks. Exercise, that's great. Fresh air, going outside, seeing humans. As long as Indiana weather cooperates with us, it's awesome. Speaking of weather, warmth is starting to come upon us. Woo! You know what that means. Stop raiding the pantry because swimming season is upon us. And one of the greatest parts when we go swimming is what? Dunking people. So tonight, we're going to have a special dunking contest. So please turn your attention over to my boy, the Timmy B. All right, Tim, are you ready? Okay, these are the rules of the game. 
I'm going to label a scenario, and you will dunk one of the two individuals, Malachi or Danny, into the water to symbolize that they are the recipient of this scenario. Ready? All right. Who is more likely to fall asleep during a movie? Who is more likely to pull an all-nighter? Who is more likely to live in a jungle? Who is more likely to blast music in their car? Who would be more likely to pull a prank? Who is more likely to fall down the stairs with cake in their hands? Who is more likely to stay at home on a Friday night? All right, are you guys ready for round two? This is Lindsay and Sam, your high school pastors. First question, who's more likely to fix their hair more often? Really? Oh. <laughs> Who forgets where they parked their car? Who's more likely to play video games? Who forgets to take a shower? <laughs> Who is more likely to get a speeding ticket? Who would read a book twice? Who is brave enough to eat dog food? All right, we are now going into the final round, round three, with Lexi and Gabe, your middle school pastors. First question, who's more likely to go to a party for the food? Who is more likely to hike with strangers? Who is more likely to take apart something just to fix it? Who is more likely to work in their pajamas? Who is more likely to sleep past their alarm? Who is more likely to drink the most coffee? Who is more likely to go to the bathroom during a meeting? Hey guys, so we're about to go into a time of worship and it might feel a little weird and a little awkward because it's all virtual and you're not here physically with us, but worship isn't something that we should neglect, especially in this time. There's something so powerful and so significant about worshiping together. We're lifting up words, we're lifting up emotions, we're lifting up melodies but with praise and adoration to our King in which he deserves all. Before we get into our actual singing, I want to give you guys a couple different ways or ideas to experience this time with us in worship. The first thing that you can do is sing along with Sam and Troy. Maybe you have the gift of mu being musically inclined. And if that's the case, use your gift in this time to sing along. The second thing that you can do is grab your journal and journal during this time. What's this song saying to you? What does this song mean to you? How is it resonating with you in this season or maybe just in this moment right here and right now? And lastly, you could look up the lyrics to this song and pick out a word or a phrase and meditate, it on, meditate on it in this time. What is it about that word or that phrase that caught your attention? What is it about that word or phrase and how can God, what is God trying to teach you with that? If there are any other ways, creative ways, that you wish to spend this time and experience this time of worship, I encourage you to do so. And before we go, I want to read a portion of Psalms 145 to you. I will exalt you, my God and my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wonders, wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness. And they shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing along of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is all over that he has made. You are here. You are 
to be able to share with you today. It seems like it's been forever since I've seen a lot of you guys. Actually, it's 
probably felt like forever since you've seen a lot of people. <laughs> um, but what a crazy season we're in, right? I mean, who would have imagined that we would be spending over a month in this quarantine phase? And, and it's probably brought up a lot of questions. I know I've been asking questions like, when will this end? When can I see my friends? And when can I get back to worshiping in church with um, my community? And and even maybe some more personal questions, like what does this look like for my family? How is Jalen, who's a nurse in the ER, how is he being protected in this season? And um, if you weren't aware, we're pregnant. And so that's brought up a whole lot of anxiety. I'm, you know, I'm anxious as a first time mom. And then you throw in a, a pandemic and it just adds all sorts of different anxiety and fear. And, and so in this season, I've, I've really been battling with anxiety in particular. And I was, you know, I'm journaling a lot lately. I love to journal. And, and so I thought maybe it would be helpful if I went back and I looked at my journals from this time last year. And so I pulled out my journals and I went to April of 2019. And I was kind of shocked because I found that I had been journaling in that season a lot about anxiety and fear. And I thought, well, obviously this virus hasn't been lasting that long, um, but it was a different kind of anxiety. You know, at that time last year, this, you know, in April, Jalen and I were dealing with announcing that we were moving to Fort Wayne. And so we were dealing with a lot of questions, you know, what does it look like to move our family and to start over in a new church? And how do we find friends? How do we find community? What is... What does next look like for us? And, and so even last year, I was journaling about some anxiety and some fear and, and how do I navigate seasons of change and unknowns? And it was interesting that last year at that time when I was journaling those very feelings, and then this year when I was journaling feelings of anxiety and fear, that I ended up turning to the same passage in scripture it's actually a psalm that I discovered when I was a SOAR intern. So this would have been over five years ago. And it's a psalm that I return to on a regular basis because it offers me a lot of hope and it reminds me of some important truths and seasons when I'm experiencing anxiety and fear. And so I wanted to share that with you guys today. Psalm, uh, psalm 40, and I'm just going to read verses 1 through 4, and it says, this is King David's, you know, speaking. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. And I think this psalm offers me so much encouragement in this season that no matter what that slimy pit is that David's describing, whatever that fear is, that doubt, that anxiety, that God hears when I call out to him, when I tell him, God, this is how I'm feeling. And then God gives me a firm place to stand. You know, I can stand in truths that I find in scripture, that God is with me, that he is with me wherever I go, that God is for me and not against me, that I can, I can walk through these seasons of uncertainty with the firm knowledge and trust of who God is. Because no matter how much changes in our world or how much changes in your world, God doesn't. He is the same today as he will be tomorrow, next month, next year, and into eternity. And so God is a firm place I can put my trust in. And that's so important in these seasons where there are so many unknowns and so many uncertainties to have that place, that safe place to put my trust and to name my fears and anxieties and give them over to God because he's so much bigger than any of those. You know, if I were to continue into looking at my journal from last year into May and June and July and, and throughout this last year, I've seen God be so faithful all of those fears and anxieties about moving to Fort Wayne and starting over, God has faithfully answered those prayers. 
And we've been able to find friends and community and, and to find a place in our new church and to find a home and to be able to start a family. God has been so good in that season that I have no reason to doubt and fear that he won't be just as faithful in this season. And so I hope you guys are encouraged today that God is a place that you can put your trust, a firm foundation in the seasons of change and unknown. Hey everyone, it's Danny. I just wanted to wish you all happy Earth Day. If you're anything like me and you just love the earth that you live on, then you will want to appreciate the earth just like me. And I'm going to show you seven different ways that you can just love on your earth. Here it is. Number one, hug a tree. Number two, thumbs up to the sun. Number three, encourage a flower. Number four, run with the wind. Number five, tickle the grass. <laughs> number six, find a pet rock. And number seven, make your own mud mask. Welcome to the Gabies. This is the part of our show where we award those of you viewers who have participated in viewing our show throughout its duration. Which leads me into our very first Gaby Award. The poster child of the Gabe Reed Show. They have faithfully watched. They weekly serve at FCDC. The Gaby Award goes to Sydney and Andre Hostetler. Well done, guys. Love you. Also, favorite families. Karina, it's all of you. But this one, these are the families that have come to our homes, maintained their distance, but left us yummy goodies and meals. So I don't want to rat out the brown nosers because I don't want to make the rest of you feel bad. So thanks, burdens and crosses. Love you. Yay. Now, the third Gaby Award goes to the best small group. These, this group has met every week. They have watched the Gabe Reed show together. And that award goes to all of them. Woo! Now, students, if you're sitting here watching going, wait a second, my small group hasn't met every week, you might want to text your small group leader and say, hey, when are we meeting? Got it? That way, all small groups win this Gaby Award. The next Gaby Award goes to the biggest encourager. Now, this one, I received something in the mail. And I know some of our other staff received something in the mail from this particular individual. And I loved it because she drew a picture of me. And it was flattering. Thank you to this Gaby Award winner, Ellen Avery. <laughs> oh, we love her too. Yes. Now, the most time spent on Zoom Gaby Award, this particular student happens to see me on Zoom every day and sends me a message and randomly turns on my camera, and we start talking. It's awesome. Shout out to my boy, Bryce Geiger. <laughs> and last but not least, on a more serious note, this time in quarantine has been so huge for a number of you. And I've had the privilege of just kind of getting to hear the heart of one of our students and seeing just a major heart change in this time. So the Gaby Award for the biggest heart change goes to the Jake Yoder. Woo! Thank you for joining us for the Gaby Awards. That's all I have for you tonight. Hey, thanks for tuning in tonight. Of course, we miss you guys and we love you. And unfortunately, we're still not physically together, but we love getting to connect like this. So thanks for tuning in. And next week, you're going to want to be here as we finally um, talk to Sam about his TikTok addiction. So we'll see you next week.